Hello guys and just before this video begins the whole interview was conducted on the Winning Mentality YouTube channel. We thank Jacob for coming on and the link to the full video will be down below as this will be just the Mansfield highlights that I asked Jacob. So hope you enjoy. Mr Keita, I'll hand over to you pal. <laughs> oh, handing over to me. Oh, I'm really glad. Um, well, yeah, you can you can tell I am a Mansfield boy. I live in Mansfield, so you and I are pretty local. You coming from Nottingham, obviously. And the first question I've got here: um, You signed for Mansfield in 2017 when Steve Evans was in charge. Yeah. Uh, how did it feel for a cl uh, to sign for a club like Mansfield? Obviously, being a local boy from Nottingham. Yeah, no, it was it was it was it was good. It came at a good time for me, to be honest. Um, my mum wasn't very well, so at the time, it was good for me to to come back into the area so I could see her more more often. So it was a good and obviously when I spoke to um, Steve Evans, at first I wasn't I didn't want to sign to be honest I didn't want to go to League Two, but then when I spoke to the manager and had saw the ambitious from uh, ambitions from the the chairman and um, Carolyn, I thought yeah it's a it's a good project I can I can I can I can sign. Yeah, it, it is a good project, but this season hasn't been the best, I must admit. Um, moving, moving swiftly on, um, you scored a crucial goal in a 1-1 draw against Lincoln. Yeah. How, much of a, how It was amazing to see that goal obviously go in, Davis missing the ball and you striking the back of the net. Would you say that's one of the like, best goals you've ever scored and one of the most important goals you have scored in your career? Yeah, for that, for that, for that. Um, obviously, it's a derby um, last minute, and I think we were on a we were on a good run then at, at the time. Mm, we were something yeah. in a lot of games, and uh, we didn't play the well that game. So to get a point there was last minute was it felt like a win. So that, I think that was yeah, that was a, that was a good goal for me. <laughs> Especially you, shush of the Lincoln fans. I can remember that. Yeah, no, I don't <laughs> the celebration. <laughs> the celebration was crazy. And sticking with the goals, you scored your first goal for Mansfield at Cambridge at home. Um, did you feel confident stepping up to the penalty because it was obviously a penalty goal? Yeah, no, I, I, I think I came on that game. So mm, yeah, yeah, you did. You came on. I was thinking. Nah, I'm taking it. I think Kane Hemmings was, he was trying to get it off me. But I was like, nah, nah, I'm taking it, I'm taking it. I took it and then the keeper like, nearly saved it. So I was like, oh, thank God that went in. <laughs> Must have been a, a sigh of relief. But um, yeah. obviously we went in and we went on to win the game 2-1. So yeah, That Steve Evans, would have, he would have battered me. So I was kind of <laughs> <laughs> um, you were at Mansfield for um, wait no that's not that's my own question um, what do you think Mansfield missed last season obviously we missed out going up into League One we lost to Newport County in the playoff semi-finals on penalties what do you think was missed from the formula for us to go up if you, if you look at the season it, not too much was missing to be honest but I feel like in the start when we, we was Drawing a lot of games mm. when we when we should have been winning, and then in the end we we pretty much were stumbling over the line. We couldn't we couldn't just pick up the wins ugly. I think when we mm. when we played well we won. When we didn't play well we probably did we didn't win. That's I think that's what you need to do. Like Lincoln were not playing well but picking up wins and obviously they 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 got promoted. So I think that's that was the difference. Yeah, obviously Lincoln went on to get promoted and Mansfield are still in League Two, but. It, it's it's football at the end of the day. We can't say, especially that MK Don's loss. I went to that game and that second. I want to say second minute winner for them. It was heartbreaking, but yeah, it just took the, that that uh, that was that was a bad day for me to be honest. Because mm. well, obviously the build up to the game, you're thinking the atmosphere is crazy. Like when we was walking mm. through the uh, like not even a tunnel, but like you know, you get off the bus and then there's like a yeah. reception bit and keep on because yeah, yeah. the fans are all cheering. I was like, Phew, this is this is big today. And then mm. for them to score in the second minute, just not the wind out, wind of, out of our sails. From that, we never got going. Yeah, we did. We did throw the kitchen sink at it, but it wasn't meant to be, and uh, we still yeah. at league too. But anyway, um, who would you say was your favourite teammate whilst? You were playing at Mansfield Town. Uh, in terms of what to play with, to play with, and on a friendship basis, 
you know what that 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 change room as a as his friend they they're all my friends you know that's that's the weird thing like that's that's one change room i can say we was all like they're all they're all um like mean a lot to me they, they they're good friends of mine quite a lot of them um in terms of to, pl- to play with obviously i'm a, a midfielder who likes to play like through balls and stuff like that so for me it's like there's cj because obviously mm. he he makes the runs he's quick and i can yeah Makes him look good, makes me look good, and obviously then there's, there's Tyler Walker as well. Same same situation where he, he's a good player, so he brings your level up as well. So I'd say uh, any of them too. And obviously I've got to mention well, the captain uh, Christian Pierce, who's just he's a rock. He's been there for, for years. So <laughs> yeah, say, he's a rock. I'd, I'd I'd probably say he's a club legend in in my yeah, opinion. Definitely, definitely. He's, he's been a phenomenal player alongside uh, Mal Benning, Mister Consistent. Yeah, that, that's the thing. The, the quality in that team is just, if you actually, to name two, three players is probably unfair because the quality in that, in that then you've got Hayden White uh, when he's fit and, and obviously he broke his leg, but mm, yeah, really we missed cool. him a lot last year. Mao's got unbelievable quality. They've got, they got, they got some really good players. <laughs> Absolutely phenomenal. Um, what would you say is the best memory that you have taken from your time at Mansfield? Best memory. <laughs> I would say obviously it's disappointing because in the end it was disappointing but the season last season was a joy to play in to be honest um, the atmosphere around the ground and the football we were playing is just every, everyone was together so obviously it was disappointing in the end but overall that's probably my favourite season um, in, my, in my career Okay uh, I've got a bit of a controversial one here yeah. so it might be controversial but what did you think of each manager you played under? So, Steve Evans, we've got David Flickcroft, That's Jim Dempster, and Graham Coughlin. It's controversial, but I like it. <laughs> okay. Um, well, who was for, uh, Steve Evans first? Steve Evans, um, yeah. Um, he was a good manager like, in terms of he got us winning, stuff like that. He didn't really do too much on the training ground. He was more match day, let's win. Um, so, but it was probably a bit frustrating how we, we had like, a squad of 24 players, so each week, even if you played well, sometimes you'll be out of the team for this game. and that, So that, that was a bit frustrating in the first year. And obviously, David Fritkoff took over in the back end of that season. So he had to deal with the aftermath of that type of thing. So it was basically like, it was like a, you're playing for yourself within the team because Steve Evans made it like that way type of thing in terms of, you know, he's trying to take your shirt. So you've got to play for, you, play for yourself. And I think David Flickcroft, he doesn't like to work that way. He's more about the team. So I think that it was hard for him to, to pick up the back end of that season and uh, get us promoted because obviously he doesn't work like that. So he, he needed to change a lot of things. And I think obviously over pre-season, um, he managed to do that. Mm. We've obviously got the two more now-based managers, John Dempster and Graham Coughlin. Um, we'll go to John Dempster first. Uh, obviously, he came through the academy and managed the first team. Um, what was it like to play under him, obviously, taking the first pre-season for him and obviously taking the squad over to Portugal? Um, yeah. how, was I, it, how was it under Dempster? I think, I think it, first of all, he's, like, he's a really good guy, a um, nice guy. You can, you can talk to him about any problems you have. Um, but he's, a, he's, just a, he's, a, he's a genuine guy, do you know what I mean? Uh, but I feel like... It was hard for him, obviously picking up from last season where we lost out on the um, in the playoffs. I feel like maybe we should have moved more. But even if that's myself, anyone, um, anyone who had a good season last year, but maybe not going to do it for this year, he should have stamped his authority more in terms of he should have put uh, brought his own players in and moved the core of probably a few a few players um, out. But obviously, he thought. And I know he's thinking because he's thinking if I can just add a little bit here and there, we'll get promoted because we nearly did last year. But obviously, no, no two seasons are the same. And I think uh, pre-season was, wasn't the best. We didn't do too much running and stuff like that. I think obviously it's his first managerial job. So I think maybe he didn't want to upset people. Or, so I think, I think that if he ever does get a job again, I think he'll, he'll learn from them things and he'll, he'll be better for it. And obviously the manager now, um, you were uh, at Mansfield for a few games when Graham Coughlin came in charge. What was it under him, and especially when he came over from Bristol Rovers to Mansfield? Yeah, no, it was uh, at first it was a bit crazy. Um, to be honest, like um, obviously he demands he demands a lot 
um, in terms of, you know, going back to what I said about uh, John Dempster, in terms of where he didn't want to upset people. This uh, Graham Coughlin, he didn't really care, to be honest. Um, so he was a bit more more like that, which, which everyone, even if they didn't like it, uh, everyone respected it, to be honest. Um, you knew where you stood with him in terms of whether you're in his plans, not in his plans. Uh, well, pretty much everyone knew that. Um, but no, yeah, he was, a, he, was, he was straight to the point, really. <laughs> as, as I've seen through many videos, obviously when we lost a few games, drawing here and there, obviously stamping his authority and getting his point across, it was clear to see. Uh, and the last question that I've got is, uh, what made you make the switch to Bolton on transfer deadline day in January? Um, I think I think it was for myself really. Um, there's been a lot of times where I've just said, "I Mansfield had a good good contract," um, and I've, sometimes I've just stayed there for the sake of it. I'm, get, I'm getting paid. Um, I'm not. I'm, I wasn't. I was in the manager's. I wasn't in the manager's plans. Then I was. Then I wasn't. So I was just like, "I need to. I need to go and play games." Um, so when I when I came to Bolton, I didn't care about. Uh, what money they were offering me. Well, I, like, I took a pay cut to, to go to Bolton. Mm. I just wanted to play football. And obviously this, mm. this coronavirus thing just uh, <laughs> kind of messed it up a little bit, but obviously that, can't, that can't be helped. You know what I mean? Mm. But that's, yeah. that, that was my thinking when I, when I, when I left. Yeah. yeah just, just to hop back in, Adrian. Sorry. I'm go on, hop back in, jump in. Hop in. Um, I, not many people know like firsthand from a footballer like, what it's like for you at this moment in time in this unprecedented situation. We hear that word so many times. Yeah. Um, many times. So how, how are you? How are you personally coping with it? What challenges have you have you had? Um, the the most challenging thing is probably just to, to keep fit. Um, obviously we we're doing runs. Um, we've got runs to do. We have to send it into the group every every day what we're doing. But it's just it's just hard in terms of. If you're running on the road, you get your hips back. Um, it's not it's not like normal training, do you know what I mean? It's just like running for the, for the sake of it type of thing. Just to keep fit and it's not like with an end goal in, in mind. We don't know, oh, if he said, oh, do 12 sessions and then on the, you're going to be back. But we don't, we don't have a clue. So it's just like Groundhog Day really at the minute. Yeah. Yeah. Adrian, pass it back over. For the you're passing it back over to me. Um, You've played. You've played a few games for Bolton. Um, how has it been? Uh, give us a brief summary of the few games that you have played for Bolton. Um, I feel. I feel like most probably from pre-season, I haven't been as fit as I can be. Last season, I was fit. I was flying. I uh, felt good. So when I've come to Bolton, obviously I've, I've had to do. Obviously, I had David Fricklock last year at Mansfield, so he's thinking, what's like? He asked me questions like, what's what's happened? Why? Are you not as fit as you was last season? This so I've been doing catch up really, uh, mm. doing a lot of running and stuff like that, and trying to get match fit before I. And then obviously the plan was for me to play like the last ten games of the season, um, mm. so because I knew I wasn't going to play at the, at the start when I came because I knew I had to catch up to the rest of the boys. Um, so the plan was to play the last ten and show what I can do, and obviously try try and stay here. Mm. Chris, I'm going to pass it over to you. Um, um, yeah, I think, that's, so. I think that's a very good way to finish. Finish it here and now. And uh, th thank you very much, Jacob, for, for talking to us. We really appreciate no it. No problem. No um, problem. And we wish you the best of luck with everything you're doing at the yeah. present moment in time. And hopefully the season will restart. We hope and pray hopefully. ourselves. <laughs> um, but this has been the Women Mentality YouTube channel. Give us a subscribe and we will see you on the next time, next video.